Pizza Matriciana time! Bucatini alla Matriciana! Today I'm taking you to Rome. Well, this pasta is originated from the region of Lazio, from the town of Amatrice. But the Romans, the city of Rome, took the credit. So this is now a Roman dish. So when you go to Rome, make sure you try it. And if you don't want to go to Rome, we bring you Rome into your belly. Enjoy! A matriciana, bucatini alla matriciana. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate. Today we make bucatini alla matriciana, which is basically the carbonara without eggs but with tomato sauce and white wine. Oh yeah, let's make it together. The most important ingredient is the guanciale. So as you can see, the guanciale has plenty of fat, which it will kind of turn into oil, and the top quality meat. Pig cheek, if you can't find pig cheek, you can go for pancetta, right? Pancetta is a pork belly. Both of them are cured. If you can find either of them, don't use bacon because bacon is not going to give you the same flavor, unfortunately, okay? What you can use instead, you can use salami, chop it into cubes, and that's much better than bacon. But pancetta or guanciale, it's the right way to do. So I don't want to be a pain to tell you not to use bacon, but bacon is smoked. This is cured, okay? So there's a big difference in flavor. That's, that's why I'm trying to be, that's why I'm, I'm fussy about it. You, you get different experience, different flavors if you use bacon, okay? So go for this, please. Then we need peeled tomatoes, okay? So when I say peeled tomatoes, I mean a peeled tomato. This is a small can of 400 grams, and that will be enough for two people, you know? So I'm making about 250 grams of bucatini. Now, bucatini is that type of spaghetti pasta with a hole in the middle. So basically, bucatini, I only use it when I make this delicious amatriciana pasta. I don't really use bucatini for anything else, but it's just perfect with this. So you can see through. So what you love about this pasta is that the sauce will go inside and it will help to get more flavors. The other ingredient that we need is the wine. You don't need this in carbonara, but the wine is something that you need. If you don't like alcohol, you don't drink alcohol, don't worry. This is just give the flavor. The alcohol will disappear when you cook it. And we finish it off with salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, just to give the extra flavor. More pepper, less salt. Okay guys, now we need to cut the guanciale. Hopefully, hopefully you can get some guanciale. And what we need to do here, we need to remove the skin, okay? We have about, 250 grams of guanciale here but once I remove the skin we're gonna have about 180 170 grams so I recommend you to use about 150 grams let's say if you make it for two people okay see now all this fat is gonna turn into oil the other thing you can use I'm just thinking loud is prosciutto you cut some prosciutto into cubes and then you have it you got the fat you have the meat you might want to make them uh, a little bit crispier. So now that we have removed the skin, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to cut it into strips, just like that. And then what we do is with each strip, we wanna cut it into small strips like this. So when we're going to eat it, we are not going to have a big chunk of meat. So that's my recommended size for you to cut the guanciale. I'm making pasta for two people and I'm using a can of peeled tomatoes. It's a small can and we're gonna get beautiful Italian peeled tomatoes. Now what we want to do with these beautiful tomatoes that smell so good, we want to actually crush them with a fork gently. You want to keep this recipe rustic, okay? There is, you can put it in a blender, you can crush them with whatever you want to do with a crusher, but honestly the best way to enjoy this dish is to actually crush it with your fork and keep it as rustic as possible. That's how any Roman nonna who make it. And here it is, our sauce. This is our sauce. Now, let's go and cook. Maybe, maybe I didn't tell you one thing. 
Well, you finish off this dish with pecorino cheese. The pecorino romano cheese is how you mm, take this dish to the next level. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to put a lot of water in a large pot and we want to boil the water, okay? So the water is boiling and now we get a nice pan and what we want to do is we want to put on a medium low heat. You don't want to burn the guanciale, the guanciale needs to cook gently, okay? And we wait until it starts to to, re to create oil, okay? You will be able to soon to see the oil coming out from the guanciale. As you can see, a guanciale is slowly, slowly cooking, gently. And we have a little bit of guanciale here, which has got some color there, which means it's melting. The, the fat is melting. Please take your time when you do so. You don't want to stress the meat. The meat needs to be relaxed. As you can see, we're getting some oil out. So you can see a little bit of oil coming out. What we want to achieve at this point is that we want to see the meat to become crispy. We want the meat to be tender inside and crispy on the outside. And two more minutes maybe, and, and then we add the wine. Look how much the meat reduced. You thought maybe it was too much at the beginning. You said, oh my God, you, got, you, got, you, you must be crazy for using that much. But look, this is going to disappear more, you know? So if you like meat, go for it. Put more if you want. Guys, this is the point where we want to add the wine. You can see here at the bottom, we've got this patina there that we created. It's all the residues from the meat. And now what we want to do is we add the wine to give the extra flavors to our guanciale. All the flavors are coming out. The alcohol is disappearing because it go, is going into my nose, into my body. This wine, it's an important step of the recipe, guys, okay? And it's gonna cook, it's gonna evaporate in no time. You watch, in less than three minutes, see it all, all the alcohol will evaporate and you will only have a little bit of uh, wine left in there. Wine without alcohol. Just let it cook for about three minutes. Your question could be, do I have to use white wine? Can I use red wine? Look, I've got plenty of wine in my house, okay? White wine is the way to go. You wanna use red wine? I'm a red wine fan. You can use red wine, but the white wine, it is more delicate uh, in order to achieve what we want to achieve with this recipe. If you really don't want to use alcohol, wine, and I can understand, just um, maybe use a vegetable stock, maybe a, a, a glass of wa uh, water, I guess it will do the job. But if you can, please use a wine, okay? And now it's time to add the peeled tomatoes that I previously crushed with a fork. Beautiful, rustic, peeled tomatoes and now we can say we are almost ready to cook the pasta now we want to cook these delicious peeled to potato tomatoes with the guanciale we want to cook it for about 10 15 minutes you know we want to keep the freshness of the of, of this just keep stirring it and at this point is where you want to add the salt and the pepper do i have to be generous with the salt no, because the guanciale is very salty. Just a little pinch of salt. The pepper, do I have to be generous with pepper? Oh yeah, guys, you need to be extremely, extremely generous. The flavors are really coming out now. Oh yes, baby. See what I said before when I said to you, cut the guanciale small? Because see now, it's kind of melting together with the tomatoes in there, see? What the sauce is also doing for us here, the sauce is actually making the meat more soft, more soft, it's gonna give more flavors, of course, to the meat. And look at that, look how stunning this sauce is. 10 more minutes and we are ready to cook the bucatini. When you see this result, you know that your sauce is ready, okay? So let it slowly, slow cook at the lowest temperature, or you can actually switch it off at this point, because now we wanna cook the pasta. Okay, what do we do now? Well, the water is boiling, so it's time for us 
to add one spoon, one tablespoon of rock salt. So after we add the rock salt, we are ready to add the bucatini and follow the instruction on the packet. This bucatini takes six minutes to cook. After six minutes, a beautiful bucatini are ready. They're nice and al dente. Don't overcook them, guys. Let's take the pasta out and then we put it together with the sauce, okay? At this point, I'm gonna turn up the sauce again on a, on a medium low heat, okay? And I'll start adding the pasta inside. Don't worry if you have a little bit of pasta water in there, it's fine. And then we do the mantecatura. The mantecatura is when we have all the ingredients combining into one. When we basically have the pasta, every single bucatino gets the flavor. That's the mantecatura. The mantecatura is basically the risotto technique. So here we go. Five tablespoons of pasta water in there. And now we do the mantecatura. Look at this wonderful creation. Look at the bucatini simmering in this wonderful sauce with guanciale and rustic crushed peeled tomatoes. Look at that. Guys, we want our pasta to mix very, very well. And here, I think we are ready to serve. All is missing now is the pecorino. So let's plate it and then we add the pecorino cheese. And now the best part of the video recipe. Eating time. Let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. Bucatini, the lax straws. And when I suck in, I suck in the sauce. Mmm, listen, crispy and soft on the inside. Every forchettata I get, I get the guanciale too. And it's just fantastic. A fantastic Roman dish. Next time you go to Rome, order this dish. If you don't go to Rome, bring Rome to your kitchen. Make it at home and feel like you're in Rome. This is delicious. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. We will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. Oh, love you. Rome is in my mouth right now. <laughs>